Our project for today is serpentine belt failure and how to, how to prevent it. Probably since the late or mid 90s, most cars have gone to the serpentine style belt versus conventional V-belt. If you remember the V-belt pretty much had three or four belts on the car, one to drive each component such as an alternator, power steering, air conditioning, and other components. What the serpentine belt has done, it's turned the project into one belt per vehicle. Sometimes there's a second belt for the air conditioning, but it'll have one belt that runs everything. Water pump, alternator, power steering pump. And what we have on the BMWs is a second serpentine belt that runs the air conditioning compressor. The advantages of the belt is they have extremely long belt life, so you hardly ever have to think about them. And the other nice thing is they typically have spring-loaded or hydraulic-loaded tensioners, which keep the tension on the belt constantly, no matter how much it stretches. Now, on the old conventional belts, the, the um, V-belt style, it was mechanical tensioners, which basically required you to, as the belt stretched, you had to get under the hood, loosen the adjuster, and tighten the alternator or whatever component was at risk. The advantage there was the belt would start squeaking to tell you there's something going on under the hood. So that made you look at the belt, tighten the belt, or replace the belt if it was worn. The downside of the serpentine belt with its automatic spring-loaded tensioners that they all come with, at about 50 or 60,000 miles, it still is just a rubber belt. And what ends up happening is with the tensioner constantly applying pressure, you never hear any kind of slippage. So you're going to come across a belt that typically will look like new, but occasionally that belt will have a little fray coming off of it. And I'll show you that fray right here. There you go. That's the beginning of a failure of one type of belt. Then we have another common failure, and that's just the rubber rot of the serpentine belt. And if you look at that, What's happening right there is when that belt does a reverse turn, what's going to happen is those V's in that belt have a tendency to just crack, and they will shred eventually. So what's happening here with this unit is the tensioner will always keep tension on this belt until eventually the belt just shreds and comes apart. If that belt does shred and come apart, you're going to stop your water pump, your alternator, power steering, etc. The car will literally come to a standstill. Now another thing you want to keep an eye on are the pulleys that operate under this system. You've got the main crank pulley. It operates of anywhere from about 1,000 RPM at idle to 6,000 RPM when you rev the motor. If you look at the size of that pulley, it's about a 6 inch diameter pulley you're looking at these idler pulleys, tensioner pulleys, and what's happening here, they're about half the size. So these pulleys are traveling at double the speed of the crankshaft. So if you're driving down the highway at 3,000 RPM, those little pulleys are doing about 6,000 RPM. At 6,000 RPM, you're relying on a small plastic wheel with a built-in bearing. That built-in bearing is constantly running. It has lubrication that was supplied from the factory one time. And what this bearing right here has done, it's a failed bearing. I'll let you listen to it. it sounds like a worn out skateboard wheel. At 3000 RPM for two or three hours, that pulley will eventually fail. And what will usually happen is the bearing will seize up and then the belt will shred because the alignment of the pulley goes all off. What you want to do is at about 50,000 miles, start looking at your belt, make sure you replace it. My recommendation is no later than 70,000 miles, replace the idler pulley and the tensioner pulley. These are really important and don't just do one because what will end up happening is you'll replace the one that you see is bad, assume that the other one will go a little further, but you don't want to start staggering the wear. Here's a tensioner pulley right here. Now this one here doesn't have too bad of a bearing, but you can still hear it. 
It'll run like that for a while. It's absolutely dry. The bearing is still in good shape, but there's no lubrication in there. So what we want to do is we want to start off with two new bearings and a new serpentine belt to keep the car in one to keep the car in good service for 70 or 80,000 miles.